something's certainly there that when we, we, we have a bad morning, and we kind of define it that way. This was bad, that was bad. And there are a lot of opportunities, of course, to define it differently. Like, you know, we could say, oh, I forgot to charge my phone. You could stop and say, isn't it amazing that we have these phones, you know, these devices? It's, it's incredible. Like, you can watch TV shows from, like, the, the 70s and 80s, and they're predicting, you know, what the future is going to be like, and they have these really high-tech devices, which, even in their imagination, in the 70s and 80s, are nothing like what you have in your, in your hand right now. And you could marvel at the incredible engineering. Or you could say, but this damn engineering isn't fully charged. <laughs> You know, and you're going to have, well, you have an opportunity to, to charge that phone later, hopefully. Maybe when you get to school, you'll be able to, to plug it in somewhere, hopefully, hopefully. But it, it's going to have a lot to do with how we choose to see it. And now, oftentimes we'll see that kind of thing. Like, well, again, we see these posters on walls sometimes that just say, you know, you must, you must choose to, to see things a certain way. Yeah, that's right. You must choose to see things a certain way. Good luck. Is it that easy? Can you sit there and just go, it's not charged. What an incredible piece of engineering that we have here. Because <laughs> who cares if it's an incredible piece of engineering? Because you can't use it because it's not charged. So as, as great and wonderful as it is, it's very easy to, to fall into that, that downward spiral that now it's hard to see almost anything in the day as, as, as going well. It almost has to be something really big to just kind of turn your whole day around. Um, that kind of goes back to what I was thinking about, what you were saying there about uh, like the voices that, that she hears, or the voices that we hear. And by the way, the voices don't just have to be schizophrenic voices. Think about some of the voices that you hear in your own head. You're not good enough. You're too fat. And you're ugly. And you're too fat, and you're ugly, and you're not good enough. <laughs> and other people are, are talking about you. You know that, right? Like, as soon as you leave the room, like, any guys go to the bathroom, you know, the second you go leave this this room, go to the bathroom, know we're all talking about you, right? Yeah, and we're saying that you're too fat and ugly and you're not good enough. In other words, whatever voices are in your head that are telling you that you know, these, these very negative things, um, are, they, are they true? No. No, probably not. Um, you know, in order for you to think that people are talking about you, you have to have a really elevated sense of yourself to think that you're that important, that everyone's talking about you. And if they are talking about you, then you are very important. So maybe you can bask in that and go, huh, they're all talking about me. I'm very important, <laughs> which means that maybe I am good enough. Maybe I'm not these, these negative things. Um, but then again, it's difficult to, to reframe our thinking this way. But it takes practice. You have, to, you, have to, you have to do it, and do it a lot, by the way. Because doing it just a little bit won't give you the practice that you need to do it. And I think that we, we do a, a terrible disservice when we... And we treat it like it's such an easy thing to just choose to see the world differently. No, it's difficult to. It's difficult to. Um, you know, it's like I've talked about if you, if you Google search, you know, what is, and one of the top searches that comes up is love. People are trying to figure out what love is. And they're trying to figure out, like, am I in love? Am I not in love? And I wonder how many of you have ever wondered if you've been in love. Like, I wonder if I love this person or not. I wonder how many of you have been in, in pain or in suffering, and you wonder and go, am I really in pain and suffering? No, let me go and find out. There's almost nothing more real than, than that. You know that that's, that, 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 that that's happening to you. So when you're in the midst of something like that, I'm not saying that, that failing to charge your phone is somehow like the depths of misery and suffering, but it's somewhere on that scale, for sure. And so when you're in, that, when you're in the depths of those things, it's very difficult to look up and, and see something positive. It's like... Like Oscar Wilde said, that we're all in the gutters, but some of us are looking up at the stars. Not all of us. We all know that we should be, or could be, but only a few people are actually able to, to do that. And of course, those are the, the dreamers who we, we admire. We like being around those people. Um, these parameters that we were saying, I was talking about earlier, that we set these parameters up around our lives, and we live our lives within them. Whatever it is that you believe about yourself. Um, if you believe you can, or if you believe you can't, you know, saying goes, you're probably right about that. You know, I coach, um, I, go, I, I coach little kids in jujitsu, and little kids will come in like, <clears throat> out of curiosity, how many of you guys legit? I'm not gonna make you prove it. I'll, I'll take, I'll take your word for it. But how many of you in here can do a cartwheel? Yeah, and this amazes me. I always thought that like 
every little kid in the world like knows how to do a cartwheel. I thought that was just like part of the basic programming. And I had no idea that little kids can't do cartwheels. And so these little kids come in, and some of them, it's just like second nature, man. And some of them are doing like one-handed ones. You know, and I'll joke with them and go, okay, so can you do a no-handed cartwheel? <laughs> and they'll try and do it, they'll flip around, and they'll land on their heads, and they'll, th and they'll think it's great. And then this one kid I'm thinking of, gosh, dang it, she's been there for over a year, and she can't do a cartwheel. She still puts her hands down, and she tries to go the back way, and it lands on her back. And I'll show her and show her and show her. She just never quite gets it right. And then I'll have a kid who will come in like on his first day, and like, or maybe their second day, and they'll try and do it, and they'll say, oh, I can't. And I always say, well, yeah, not with that attitude. You know, I can't do anything if you, if you have convinced yourself that you can't. Um, if you can convince yourself that you can, or maybe not, because that's, that, would, that would mean lying to yourself a lot of times. Like, you might think, I can do anything. No, you, you can't. There are parameters. There are real parameters around your life, and then there are false ones that we set up for ourselves. It's blue. In other words, maybe your parameter here is a square. Maybe the, the parameter of your life is a square. But maybe it's something more like, like this, where, God, that's like someone screaming, didn't it? <laughs> In other words, maybe the, the real program in your life, you're not as, as great as you think you are in certain areas. And that's maybe is the, is the point that we're going to focus on. But the reality is, you're also probably greater in other areas. At least your potential is, your potential is greater than you realize in a lot of other areas. Um, it takes a lot to be able to, to really set up, sorry, to really understand the real parameters of your life. And so we live, though, according to those. So in a, you know, in a more like, I guess, schizophrenic approach, if she's hearing voices, if Virginia Woolf is hearing voices, are those voices real? Um, not, they're not real, but, she, but they operate in her life as though they're real. So they might as well be, as far as she's concerned. She really might as well have somebody following her around and whispering into her ear, because she's going to live according to that. And so the kinds of things that we set up around ourselves, whether they're real or not, we're going to live according to them. They might as well be real. And so just like maybe choosing to, to, to see things in a positive way, even, even negative things, maybe trying to choose to, to expand those, those parameters. And there are ways to do that, by the way. You can gain a skill set so that your triangle is no longer there, but now your triangle is out here because you gained more skill sets. You've, you've learned some things. You've gotten better at some things. Maybe even start to believe in yourself a, a bit more. You know? um, but that does take some doing. It takes a lot of doing on your part. And that's the unfortunate thing is that it's not easy. And so because it's not easy, a lot of our parameters end up looking like this. You know? Because we could push them out, but we don't believe what we, but it, because it takes that work to do. It isn't so much, the thing is, I don't know that it's so much like, that we can't do the work or that we're afraid to do. Because a lot of times we say like, oh, I'm just lazy, I don't want to. I don't know that that's really the case a lot of times. I wonder if it's just that we really don't think that we can, and it's that uncertainty. People will like, you know, want to you know, pour their lives into something if it turns out that you really can't expand those, those parameters, those horizons of your life. You know, it's that, it's that, it's that uncertainty of not knowing if, if you actually can. Like, for example, if I told you, if I told you today, um, if you do, I don't know, let's say somehow I could convince you, and I can actually convince you, that um, running one mile a day, and exactly one mile, if you did that every day for seven days, for four weeks, that at the end of those four weeks, you would be given a million dollars. And I could somehow prove it to you. I could show you the money, and you could put it inside of a safe, and give it kind of everything. I wonder how many of us could do that. I imagine now all of us in this room could actually do that somehow, some way. But that's because you know that there's a reward at the end of it. You're certain about it. It's that uncertainty I think that, that throws us off. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't even know what the hell is out there. Like, if I were to ask you right now, where do you want to be in 10 years? What the hell is 10 years at your age? And that sounds like a lifetime in some ways. It's, it's almost impossible to imagine what life is going to be like in 10 years. And that means it's, it's, it's literally impossible to believe where you could possibly be in 10 years. And so we have to keep those parameters close and tight. Where am I going to be in a, a week from now, two weeks from now? And of course, that's hard too, because well, what does it matter where I'm going to be two weeks from now? 
in the grand scheme of my whole life. It was a hard balance to kind of stretch between the two. And so, how do you solve this? Come back in two years, I'll tell you. There is a solution. But that's not for today. Be careful about the phantoms that you entertain in your life. Be careful about the voices that you allow to enter, the voices that you listen to. And for God's sake, learn how to swim. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Happy Thursday-ish.